My name is Olga and this is my channel about startups and today we will talk about a sales deck or in general about sales in a startup and uh, before I start please subscribe give me some likes shares uh, if you like my content and also your questions uh, what would you like to know about so sales sales in a startup this is the deck I prepared for alchemist uh, Al accelerator where I am a mentor I was in batch 26 in Silicon Valley in San Francisco in 2020. So uh, that, that's the deck I will use. So let's go. I am co-founder at Via Delivery and uh, because I will talk about sales and how we sell in my startup, uh, I want to first uh, give you a short uh, brief overview of, of what my startup is doing so you understand better uh, the idea. So basically, we offer in the US alternative delivery method to pick up locations. If you order something online in the US, you have you usually have the only option home delivery or residential delivery. What we offer to uh, e-commerce brands, D2C brands is alternative delivery uh, or delivery to pick up locations where, where clients go and pick up their, their orders. And you can see in checkout, there is a residential delivery and there is us. We have 22,000 pickup locations across the US and why clients choose us uh, because of porch piracy, because we are cheaper, because this is more green since courier delivers in bulk to these locations, etc. And this is a map of how we uh, look like in checkout. So basically that's about my startup where I am co-founder and product manager. And I will now talk about sales process in my startup. Uh, so uh, sales and since it's a B2B startup, uh, it will be more B2B biased, but I think it will also work for B2C in some way. Uh, so before you um, start your sales process, you have to do customer development. As a product manager, I love this approach. You first have to talk with your potential clients and your real clients and be, build segments. For example, for me, I knew that my segments would be apparel, wine, cosmetics, CBD, etc. And all these clients have different portrait and they have different needs. And since they have different needs, you have to sell differently. You have to use different pain points and you have to approach different pains and, um, uh, and needs they have. So I, I built several portraits and I knew we have medium and big clients. So small clients would not be for us just because they would be not very risk averse and they don't want to kind of try this technology before big folks do. And actually we want a couple of very big clients first before we want small clients. Uh, so where to, st okay, I built my portraits, my avatars uh, of my potential clients. And usually there are several segments. It's not with just one portrait. There are three to four clients, client segments. Then I start thinking about lead generation. How I am going to get my leads from where? And there are several um, ways we several um, lead generation sources we tried, cold emails, LinkedIn's, Philippine Center, in-house call center. And I have to say that for us, cold emailing and LinkedIn work the best. Just a uh, heads up, you know, because um, cold center doesn't really work when you uh, innovate on the market and you introduce something completely new. Unfortunately, People that don't work in your company or not founders, co-founders can't explain your solution very well when it's a very innovative solution. It's very hard to do that. And how do I, how I'm going to uh, tr uh, track my process, my sales progress? 
uh, do I need CRM, do I need spreadsheets, do I need uh, Google Sheets, etc. So for us, HubSpot, uh, we uh, used HubSpot from the beginning. When we, we were a startup with zero sales and zero clients, we already introduced HubSpot. And I really suggest you doing so uh, because you need to track your progress. And believe me, you have pro progress. You just, if you don't track it, you don't see it. And HubSpot makes you think professionally about your company, about your lead generation process, and step by step, you will have new clients. And also it helps you track, keep track of your clients. Because you think, oh, I'm so small, I won't lose any client. I know about everyone as a founder. But then, believe me, you get uh, distracted and you forget about these leads. When you have a, a HubSpot or other CRM, it helps you keep everything in place and track your progress. Uh, okay, do I need a sales team? Do I need people? Do I hire people here in the US or I hire people somewhere else? I would say, uh, again, I'm gonna talk about that later, but don't be in a hurry. So target audience. So that's basically kind of a pipeline. I think about my audience. I think about my lead generation say, um, uh, channels. I think about how I'm going to uh, track my progress. I think about whether I need a team. And you start with, again, target audience. You think about your target segments. You talk to them. You do customer developments. You understand their pains. So for us, for example, at Via Delivery, we realized, okay, these are D2C brands, US market, apparel, cosmetics, CBD, wine, at least that much revenue. We don't, we are not interested in lower revenue just because companies with lower revenue, they are very risk averse. They don't want to try something new. They will follow when big guys do that. What kind of titles, if I want to lead, uh, use lead generation emails, what kind of titles do I need? Uh, who are those people who might be interested in my service? Who are the, mo the, the benef beneficial people that will get benefits from using my service? So for me, it's head of e-commerce, direct of e-commerce, VP of e-commerce, logistics, operations, maybe sometimes marketing and sales, but not that often. And uh, I want more clients with no third party logistics, so no, no um, um, outbound distribution centers. I want everything to be in-house for this client because it's easier for me uh, to integrate with, with these kind of clients. It, it doesn't mean I won't consider clients with third party logistics, uh, but for me it's better, it's easier to start with those that have everything in-house. Then I think about portraits of my audience and also what kind of pains this audience has, each of them. So for example, wine, uh, they, the, the problem for them is that if people, are, this is a signature required product, and if people are not at home, they need to uh, re-deliver it, make second and third attempt, and that's expensive. So that's the pain for wine I can address. For D2C brands like apparel, etc., porch piracy, uh, privacy, uh, uh, price of delivery. For CBD, these are like marijuana that is allowed in many states. That's privacy. People don't want their relatives to know what they order online. Toys, sometimes these are gifts and people also don't want to know their uh, family uh, to find these uh, items. So that's why they might be willing to go and pick it up. So different audiences or segments have different pains that we can address with our marketing, sales, uh, website, lending, etc. Uh, for us, as I've mentioned, the best lead generation was through HubSpot. We used um, Apollo AIO to get emails of titles that we think uh, might be our potential clients and might benefit from our service. And uh, we zoom in for is too expensive, so I would say Apollo is the best. And then we use HubSpot to do uh, sequences of emails. These are three to five sequences. Uh, we also use LinkedIn uh, to do cold outreach. And uh, we tried uh, cold calls through American call, uh, call center and Filipino as well. Filipino didn't work at all. American one, it's called concept call center. Maybe you can go ahead and 
um, get in touch with them. They were perfectly fine in doing what we uh, told them to do, but I still believe it wasn't very um, um, adv adv advantageous for us because the best sellers to make first five to 10 sales in B2B are founders. That's just the golden rule. But you can try. So as I've mentioned, Apollo plus HubSpot called uh, sequences, LinkedIn called emails and outreach, and maybe call center. Uh, do we need a CRM? As I've mentioned, yes, we do. From the day zero, every startup needs some CRM. If you can't afford HubSpot or Salesforce, use Google Sheets. It's fine. You just need to track your progress. You can see here it's a pipeline of our clients from first contact till going live. And also you can track how many calls you've done, how many emails you've sent you or your colleagues each week and what's the progress. So the answer is yes, you need some kind of spreadsheet to, to track your progress starting from zero, day zero. Uh, and do we need to hire people? No. Before you do your first 10 sales as a founder, build portraits, do customer development, find product market fit of your product you, you can't hire. You will just spend money and you and zero result and you won't be um, and you won't understand what's the reason you don't have a result. It's either your product, it's either salespeople, it's maybe the pitch itself, sales pitch, you don't know. So as a founder, make first 10 B2B sales and then hire people. People are expensive. So before you spend money, find portraits, build product, find product market feel, fit close first 10 deals. After that, you can hire people. I hope that was a good video. Please leave some comments uh, telling what you think. Thank you.